show. Give it up for Josh Wells! Yo, what's up? What's going on? How we doing, Jersey City? Yeah, all right. It's great to be here. It's great to be here. I'm taking a break from social media, and I don't know where to go to brag about it. So thank you. Thank you for being that. If you didn't laugh at that joke, you can just like it if you want. That's, that's fine, too. That's fine, too. Uh, I just went on a date recently with a woman who's not on social media. No trace at all. Somebody wooed that? I thought it was crazy, you know? I thought it felt like the modern day version of when I was in high school and I would lie to my friends. I was like, yeah, I have a girlfriend, but she goes to a different school. <laughs> you guys got moms? Yeah. <laughs> this is me being relatable. <laughs> I got a mom, man. She's really funny. I never know when to take my mom serious. Uh, we, went, we got lunch recently. And uh, she dropped a bomb on me, man. She dropped a bomb on me. She informed me that she may be the executor of her do not resuscitate order. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? I'm going to have to kill my mom. Fuck. How do you react to that? What's the right thing to do? I don't know, but I think I nailed it. As soon as I got home, I called up my brother. I was like, see, I told you I'm the favorite. <laughs> But now it's all I can think about, you know, me getting a call from the hospital and being like, we got your mom down here. I'd be like, say no more, you know, get my car, rushed down there. Just be like, we must respect my mother's final wishes. Do not resuscitate. The doctor's going to be like, Josh, I don't know what you're talking about. It's just a sprained ankle. <laughs> that is my mom's favorite joke. <laughs> it's also made me think about my own mortality. I did this thing, oh, you can answer that. It might be my manager. Uh, <laughs> tell him Whitey Eagle Hall was a good pick. Uh, her, I'm progressive. Uh, I, yeah, I did. I, uh, I made my own last will and testament. I don't know if anyone here has ever done that before. It's a lot of work, though. It's a lot of work. I went through the whole thing, and it turns out I'm broke. No money. Uh, no material possessions of any real uh, worth either. Uh, turns out it's just a playlist for my funeral. <laughs> turns out the most important thing to me after I'm gone is no one plays Coldplay. <laughs> oh, you don't want to anger the Coldplay fans. <laughs> They're a dangerous bunch. <laughs> Are we drinking? Man, I love drinking so much, man. I love it. I, yeah, hell yeah, cheers. Uh, you'll see me after the show, hammered outside. Uh, <laughs> nah, man, I love drinking so much. Uh, this is how much I love it. When I'm home, sober, by myself, I watch television about drinking. Do you guys watch Bar Rescue? Yeah. I fucking love this show, man. I love it. I watch it all the time. I know, every episode's the same. He makes a grown man cry and he rescues the bar. I can't help myself. Just keep watching it. I watch it so much now that like I watch them backwards, right? Because I like the I always like the bar more in the beginning when it's a complete shithole and the drinks are affordable. <laughs> it's my kind of place, you know. Every episode, and somewhere in the beginning, is John Tapper, right, the loud big guy, the host or whatever in the show, and he's in his SUV with two of his friends. They're in the parking lot of the bar. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, right? And. Uh, and they have like spy cameras all throughout the bar and John Tapper's like yelling at the laptop on his dashboard in front of his two confused friends like, look at them, look at them, they're giving the drinks away for free. And I'm yelling at my TV, shut up John, that's why we hang out there. <laughs> he ruins the bars, he doesn't rescue them. My credit score's not good enough to get into the bar once he's done with it, sucks, sucks. Uh, we got pot people in the crowd. Yeah, we were like cooler last year when it was still illegal, but you know. Uh, I'm not a big pot guy, I'm not. It gives me anxiety, I know, pussy. Uh, but I did do an edible once, one time in my life, and that's, not, you know, that's, that's the only time I need to do it. Uh, Ill advised, I did it during the scary part of the pandemic. You guys remember the scary part when we weren't allowed to do things like this? I was hanging out in a park with my friends. We had masks on. Um, and one of my friends is a drug dealer. He was like giving out a free. He was like giving out free samples of a new edible he was selling. 
And all my friends are popping them like candy, and it looks so much fun. I'm not a pot guy, but I want it in on the action. So I was like, hey, let me get one of those. You guys ever have fake confidence? <laughs> Lasts about two minutes. Long enough for me to eat this edible. Two minutes later, confidence gone, right? I was like, what the fuck did I just do? It's a pandemic out here. The numbers are surging. The hospitals are overloaded with people. This shit is going to kill me, you know? 45 minutes later, that edible starts hitting hard. And I realized I had much bigger things to worry about than a pandemic. I was like, what if gravity stops working? <laughs> scary shit, man, scary shit. I can hang up. I can hang. I'm 43 years old, don't act surprised. Yeah, yeah, yeah one 43-year-old guy in my room. <laughs> Do it for the 43-year-olds. Um, uh, yeah, I can still hang. Uh, it's just a little different, you know? Like in my 20s, if I hung out late with my friends, I'd wake up the next day, you know? I'd be like, man, I partied so hard last night. I did a bunch of cocaine. But now I'm 43, like if I hang out late with my friends, I'll, I'll wake up the next day, I'd be like, man, I partied so hard last night, I saw cocaine. <laughs> and then I went home. <laughs> That's my curfew now, cocaine o'clock. <laughs> Nothing good happens after cocaine o'clock. <laughs> to give you guys an idea of the last time I did cocaine, uh, it was on a CD case. <laughs> you guys remember CDs? Get a little scratch in them, you throw it out your car window all frustrated and shit. But they sold them in these convenient little cocaine tables. They were perfect, right? Six lines. Three for you, three for one of your friends. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna party after the show. I don't know what you said, but I know it was cool. <laughs> this guy's this guy's carrying. <laughs> you have that CD case, three lines for you, three lines for one of your friends, right? You do those lines real quick, then you look down at the CD case, you'd be like, holy shit, Soundgarden! Let's crank it, bro! Jersey City, you guys have been great. Enjoy the rest of the show. <laughs>